What is going on guys, Coach Joe here at the Lions Den, bringing back a special guest for this video, Brad Arvik, who is an absolute unit when it comes to strength training and just knowledge in terms of powerlifting. So, uh, he's gonna be talking about something that I found very interesting that has to do with Keller Wollum uh, and his previous world record deadlift, and also give you guys some tips on the deadlift. It'll make more sense as he starts talking about the video, uh, but I think there's a lot of knowledge and some uh, golden nuggets to be found in this video. So hopefully you guys enjoy it, and without further ado, let's get over to Brad. Hey Joe, thanks a lot for the introduction, and thanks again for letting me on the channel. Uh, it's uh, really good to be back. For anyone who doesn't know who I am or hadn't seen me before, just a little bit of information about myself. Uh, my name is Brad Arbeck. I'm a staff sergeant in the United States Army. I've uh, been in service for about a little shy of 12 years, and I also compete in powerlifting, predominantly USPA. I've set a number of records, uh, both uh, state and national, as well as world record, uh, early in my career, and um, have a lot of experience in lifting. Uh, so far as I know, I have the highest raw total of any service member any active duty service member uh, at over 2,000 pounds, and uh, I have a over 500 Wilkes. Um, you can look me up on Open Powerlifting if you would like to see a little bit more about my meets and things like that. At any rate, what brings us here today is I want to talk about something that I think is kind of important. A little while ago on my own channel, I released a video, and um, it's just something that I thought was interesting and I wanted to talk about. And uh, you know, talking it over with Joe. We saw an opportunity to kind of have a bigger audience and be able to talk a little bit more in depth about this this topic and um, and actually give a little bit of information to be able to help people as well. So um, definitely want to bring this thing up. And then after we're done talking about it or kind of discussing it, I'd also like to give a few cues and ideas about how any any of you out there um, may go about uh, attempting to mitigate this issue. Uh, so let's get into it. Okay, so. At the Slingshot Record Breakers, Kaylor Woolham was going for a all-time world record deadlift and uh, was attempting to hit something like 953 pounds, which for the 220 weight class was an all-time world record. And so uh, he performed the lift, and while I watched the meet uh, on the live stream, as I was watching it, um, something stood out to me that I felt was a big enough issue where the lift should have been a no lift. And I'll, I'll go ahead and show the footage right here, right now. In the SPF, you're allowed to wear a hat. Yeah, it's okay. Here we go. Taylor's going for it. 9.53. Let's go, Kyler. Get locked in, baby. Come on. Here we go. Yep. Come on. Stay with it. He doesn't give up on it yet. Oh, he's, he's got out. it. Wow. That is a good oh lift to God. me. Let's see what they say. Wow. So as you can see, there was definitely a downward movement in the um, in the, the attempt on the lift. It happened early on, but it still happened. Yep. Come on, stay with him. Yep. Come on, stay with him. Yep. Come on, stay with him. Uh, and according to the rules, there is no downward movement allowed. Um, so it was my, my personal belief that, you know, that this downward movement would have negated the um, the success of the lift. There, um, there were a lot of people that agreed with me, um, which is great. They saw the same thing that I saw, um, but there also were a number of people that were disagreeing. Um, some of the disagreements had to do with the plates not leaving the floor. Um, the federation that's that sanctions the meet was the SPF. In the SPF, there is no statement about the plates, uh, the position of the plates, leaving the floor, not leaving the floor. It does say explicitly, you know, any downward movement. Um, and the fact that there was downward movement, actually there, the plates were off the ground and you can see the inside plates right here. Yep, come on, stay with. So the inside plates did break the ground. Um, and so uh, the bar traveled further than it could have if the bar of the plates never left the ground, and so there was indeed downward movement. Another um, another argument that uh, people made was talking about how he was pulling slack, um, you know, trying to pull slack out of the bar, and that's something that uh, Joe's talked about. That's something a lot of other people have talked about. So I'm not going to rehash the concept of pulling slack, but I will show uh, kind of a side by side, you know, Kaler's pull versus a world-class lifter who is pulling slack. So first, here's Kaler's pull again. 
There we go. Yep. Come on, stay with it. He doesn't give up on it yet. Oh, he's, he's got out. it. Wow. That is and now let's look at Steffi Cohen. Uh, you know, one of the one of the best lifters on the planet, pound for pound. And let's see how she pulls slack. All right, you can clearly see the difference between you know how those two attempts went. Both of them are sumo, sumo pullers. Um, you know, both of them very successful in their own right. Um, but you can see very clearly that uh, Steffi was very uh, methodic in, in pulling the slack out of the bar. It was uh, a very clear manu uh, maneuver movement, whereas Kaler just launched into the into the deadlift. So um, the idea or the statement that Kaler was pulling slack here doesn't really hold a lot of water, especially in comparison to another world class lifter who was pulling slack out of the bar. Another argument that people threw out was, well, why does it matter? Um, which I suppose is a fair question. You know, the downward movement doesn't help him and whatever else. Um, but the the fact that we're, we're calling this an all-time world record means that it does matter, right? It matters to somebody. Otherwise, we wouldn't be touting this as an all-time world record. We wouldn't be keeping um, record of the, of the lifts. We wouldn't be comparing them side by side to each other or, you know, one against another. Um, so... We as, as people have definitely made this a thing and it's important to us as people. And so um, this, this world record attempt is no different than any other sports event, um, you know, that people talk about and analyze and look into, um, you know, for, for years and years to come. You know, we still talk about some boxing matches and football games and things like that. Calls that we thought, um, you know, shouldn't have happened or things that were missed. Um, so discussing the sport is important, um, but I believe too that when we're when we're talking about the highest level of sport, that we really should be um, more more strict or at least more um, enforce the standards a little bit better. Um, whereas we're not just allowing just anything to fly, um, especially when it's being held up as an all-time world record. Okay, so moving into what I think is probably the most important part of the conversation is talking about how to avoid this bar whip. Um, so just kind of a caveat for this, this is really only going to be kind of super important for those of you who are competitive powerlifters, um, those of you who deadlift predominantly on a, on a deadlift bar, um, so a longer, thinner, more whippy bar. Um, this would be things that you would run into. Um, and also, you need to understand too that the more weight that you're deadlifting, the more and more this is going to be a problem. Um, because you have more and more mass uh, on either side of that bar that you're beginning to move. And so um, these problems or this problem doesn't really manifest itself with really, really light weight. It begins to manifest itself the heavier and heavier you get. And I believe that uh, the more heavy you go, the more and more this is a problem. Uh, again, just because of how much mass you're beginning to move. Okay, so the first way that we can avoid this problem is through proper bracing. So... Uh, maintaining a good abdominal brace is going to be hypercritical in being able to control the weight. Um, I, it would stand to, to logic that if you aren't properly braced and you experience that caving, that thoracic rounding, um, you know, you're not, you're not able to administer as much force as possible against that bar. And so you're going to, you're going to fold over. Uh, and that's one of the first ways that you're going to have downward movement, not necessarily just at the beginning, but anywhere through the lift. So proper abdominal bracing is really, really important. Um, I know that there have been a number of videos that have discussed abdominal bracing. Um, so it's not necessarily hypercritical to kind of go through it in this format. Um, but, um, you know, making sure that you have braced and have uh, pressurized your, your abdominal cavity uh, to the best of your ability before you initiate the weight is going to be super important in helping you to avoid um, bar whip and or collapsing. All right, and the second way that you can avoid the bar whip on deadlift is to control the weight a little bit better. And so the way that we accomplish that is uh, going into the deadlift very smooth. So uh, a smooth kind of transition uh, from you know the bar being static on the floor to picking it up and, and moving through the lockout. Uh, I recorded some video of me deadlifting. Uh, what I got here is going to be 675. And so let's see it. First, in full motion. All right, one more.
more time, we'll see it again in full motion. Okay, so now let's start to slow down a little bit. We'll go back to before the pole and we'll kind of go frame by frame if we can here. And so you can see as I get set up, um, I'm, you know, getting my breath and getting ready to begin the pull. The thing that I want you to focus on is watch the plates. So you're going to watch the plates and you're going to watch the bar. So I begin to initiate the pull and you can see that, you know, the bar moving up explosively. Watch the plates kick. So that, that, that kick, that initial kick that you see, um, you know, that, that applies a force to the bar and that, you know, when you explode into the weights like that and make the, the, the plates kick the way that they do here, and you can see it there, how those plates kick real hard, you know, that's going to create a lot of, um, that's going to create an impact on the bar. And so it, it creates almost like a, uh, a rebounding effect on the bar and makes that bar whip down with those plates, you know, kicking out the way that they do. Um, and that really only, that really only happens as drastically as it does when you're um, uh, lifting explosively. So if you were to lift smoother, you're not gonna get as much plate kick and therefore you're not gonna get as much bar whip. So pulling smoothly with the plates is something that matters. All right guys, that's it, that's the video. Um, you know, we got to take a look at Kaler's pull and you know, got to kind of see what happened there and just discuss that as, as a point of performance. Um, you know, knowing full well that nothing changes you know, the record isn't being taken away or stripped or anything like that. It's just a point of conversation about how lifts are achieved within competition. Um, and I think that anyone who cares a lot about the sport or is interested in the sport, you know, having these brought up as topics of conversation um, are valuable learning points for you guys, for anyone um, that is interested in competing competitively. Um, and I think, too, that it also, in some measure, um, creates a format of conversation where, you know, more people talk, um, there is, uh, you know, potentially judges and, um, and meet, uh, coordinators and people that are involved with the sport that are going to see these videos as well and, and help to mitigate, um, issues and errors in judging and things like that. Um, so I think that just having a conversation about them is, is good. None of this is, is speaking poorly of, uh, the meet director, the judges or Kaler, um, you know, Kaler is a phenomenal athlete and it will be pulling much more than the 953 here in the near future. Um, but I do think it's important to kind of have as a topic of conversation, you know, um, looking at performances and, and being able to, to make judgments and assessments on them. More importantly, I feel like, you know, the conversation about, um, how to avoid this bar whip, um, could be something that's beneficial for, you know, any lifter that's out there, you know, looking to compete, you know, looking to be competitive. Um, they can understand what, you know, bar whip is, how it happens and how best to avoid it so that it doesn't sideline one of your attempts because, um, just because one person gets away with, um, you know, saying, Hey, hey having downward movement on their lift doesn't mean you are when you have your, you know, PR or world record deadlift, right? Um, so understanding how to mitigate that, uh, can definitely help you in the performance of, of your lifts in the future. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, you know, obviously leave in the chat in the chat box. I'll be monitoring the uh, the chat as well and responding to people if you uh, you know have comments. And again, I just want to thanks uh, thank Joe for giving me the opportunity to come back on the channel and uh, appreciate you guys for hearing me out and hearing what I had to say. And uh, just want to say thanks a lot. Really do appreciate it. On uh, on my channel, I always say no matter what it is you think you can't do, get in the gym, train despite. You're either gonna find an excuse or you're gonna find a way. And I hope that you guys continue to find the way. See you in the next one. Thanks so much for coming back on the channel, Brad. I really appreciate it. And just like Brad had mentioned, whenever there is an extraordinary feat of strength, I think it's always best for us to analyze it and figure out what we can learn from it, whether it's good, the bad, or the ugly. There's always something that can be broken down and taken away to help us in our journey. So in this case, specifically, I had to do a bar whip and watching the effects of bar whip and how to help us in our training to make sure that doesn't become a problem in our training career. So whether you are competing in a federation that uses the deadlift bar or you just like to train 
sharing with Adele Akbar, uh, we talked about some things that you need to know about and can help further progress you in your training. But make sure you guys go and head over to Brad's channel, subscribe, he has a ton of valuable videos with knowledge and tips and tricks, and I'm gonna kinda help him out as well with building that channel uh, to just keep spreading his message uh, and training despite. So thank you guys so much uh, for tuning in, head over to his channel, subscribe to him, and have an awesome Thanksgiving.